This is Frank Lieber. Exclusive interviews with the biggest names in baseball and football. Joe Namath, Johnny Bench, Leroy Kelly, Reggie Jackson. They were all at the recently concluded American Airlines Golf Classic in Puerto Rico, and so were we. Here are informal chats with the superstars each morning at 8.15 and each evening at 9.50. Another service of KRLD Sports. The latest American Research Bureau survey reports KRLD Dallas continues to have more audience than any other Dallas radio station. CBS News. The FBI in Berkeley, California, says a search is on for a young couple wanted as possible suspects in the terrorist kidnapping of newspaper heiress Patricia Hearst. This is John Meyer reporting on the CBS radio network. That announcement in California marks the first major break in the case since the terrorist Symbionese Liberation Army claimed last week that it had kidnapped Miss Hearst and is holding her as a political prisoner. Reporters were given a description of the wanted couple by Thomas Druken, assistant special agent in charge of the San Francisco FBI office. We determined during the course of our investigation that a, a late, uh, a dark, late model Volkswagen was in the immediate area of the kidnapping, occupied by a white male and white female. Now, we're merely attempting to locate these individuals as potential witnesses. Druken noted that the FBI already has released drawings of three suspects, two young black men and a white woman, who invaded Miss Hurst's apartment, attacked her fiancé, and then, firing shots at witnesses, dragged her screaming to a waiting car and drove off. More news in a moment. Oh, hello, Mr. Carlson. How are you today? Oh, fine, just fine. How about yourself, Gladys? Oh, I'm pretty good, thank you. Yeah. Now, let's see what we've got here. A toothpaste, razor blade, prunes. Something wrong. Can we have a replacement checker for Gladys on number five, please? There are still a lot of people who laugh at prunes. But now, quite a few are finding out how good they really are. Because pound for pound, prunes have eight times the vitamin A of the leading fresh fruit. And more iron, niacin, and vitamin B2 than the five leading fresh fruits. They're also a great natural source of quick energy. Oh, I'm sorry to keep you waiting, sir. I'm taking Gladys's place. Okay. Uh, let me see. Bread, milk, prunes. <laughs> oh, boy. California prunes. The funny fruit that does so much for you. Radio Baghdad says warfare has broken out between Iraq and Iran with troops, heavy artillery, and tanks engaged in fighting along the border. Heavy casualties are reported on both sides. Iran lists at least 70 casualties. The Iraqis, at least 23, killed or wounded. It's the first such fighting since the two countries reinstated diplomatic relations last October after a five-year break. Radio Baghdad also claims today's clashes were actually the third in three weeks, that there was also fighting on January 24th and again last Monday. In Tel Aviv, the Israeli military command confirms four Israeli soldiers wounded today in renewed fighting between Syrian and Israeli forces in the Golan Heights. That artillery duel ended a four-day lull along the ceasefire line. Radio Damascus says the fighting lasted more than an hour, but has made no mention of Syrian casualties. Meanwhile, in Jerusalem, the Israeli government says Russia will try to persuade Syria to turn over lists of Israeli prisoners of war being held in Damascus. Those lists, plus Syrian permission to let the International Red Cross visit the POWs, are the top Israeli conditions for beginning disengagement talks with Syria. In Amman, a Jordanian army spokesman confirmed today that the Nixon administration has supplied that Arab country with the most sophisticated portable anti-tank missile in the U.S. arsenal. The spokesman identifies the missile as the TOW. Here in Washington, the Pentagon declines comment. In Saigon, the South Vietnamese military command says communist forces have suffered their heaviest battle losses in a single action this year. A spokesman says 81 communist troops were killed in a two-day battle with government forces in the central highlands province of Pleiku. Government losses are placed at 17 killed, 15 wounded. In Cambodia today, communist troops attacked three government positions only eight miles south of the capital, Phnom Penh, and a government spokesman says an army relief column led by 24 armored personnel carriers had to retreat when it came under heavy communist fire. Now, this message. Come when you need help and understanding, a warm smile, a friendly voice from people who care. It's the philosopher, and that's the truth.
come and dance to me. But when you find friendly folk, it's easier to be. Is there anyone who doesn't respond to a kind word or a friendly face? The answer is obvious. At CIT Financial Services, courtesy and understanding are watchwords. Sure, we make money happen, but we do it quietly, quickly, without embarrassment. So whenever you need a loan and some kind words to go with it, drop into your nearest CIT office. We really like to make money happen for you. CIT makes money happen. We really do. The Nixon administration's energy czar, William Simon, has announced that the major oil companies can now begin refining more gasoline if they have produced enough home heating oil to last out the winter. Simon's long-awaited announcement on shifting refinery output comes as motorists in four states, plus the District of Columbia, prepare to switch to the so-called Oregon plan for gasoline rationing. The leaders of 13 major oil-consuming countries have been arriving here in Washington on the eve of tomorrow's opening session of a two-day conference on energy at the foreign minister's level. U.S. Secretary of State Henry Kissinger expected to try to persuade his 12 colleagues that they must act in concert with the United States to weather the world oil crisis. This is John Meyer, CBS News. Hello? Hello, Mrs. William Hawk of Anchorage, Alaska. Yes? Hi, Mrs. Hawk. My name is Ted Brown from New York City. And I'm calling ladies in Anchorage asking if you'd like to have some fun and sing the Campbell Soup Jingle. If you do, I'll send you a case of Campbell's Chicken with Rice Soup. <laughs> is this really from New York? That's right. <laughs> do you know it? Yes, I do. Well, go ahead. Mmm, good. Mmm, good. Campbell's noodle soup is mmm, good. Well, now, you changed the lyric a little bit, but you're going to get the soup anyway. Thank you. You're up there in Anchorage, Alaska, so you know what the cold winters are all about, huh? Right, I sure do. And when that weather leaves you cold, you get good hot Campbell's soup, and that leaves you warm. Yes, sir. It's exciting for me to talk to you, too, by the way. I've never called Anchorage, Alaska. <laughs> well, call again. This is really unusual. <laughs> thank you very much. Mrs. Hawk, thank you. Mm-hmm. Bye-bye. The preceding recorded message was selected from random phone calls. The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... I'm E.G. Marshall. Welcome to the sounds of suspense, to the fear you can hear, to the terrifying world of the imagination. I'm your guide for a journey up a mysterious mountain. Dead Man's Mountain is what it's called. Going is really no problem. It's coming down that separates the living from the dead. Doctor, a man simply cannot age 40 years in one night. I wish I knew what to tell you, Mr. Johnson. I saw George last evening at dinner. He was 35. This morning, he's close to 80. But how could that happen? He went where he had no business going. Up Dead Man's Mountain. Is there some kind of disease up there? Some germ? Some virus that can age a man? None that is known to science. Then how do you account for it? Probably the Indian legend is correct. Some evil spirit up there hates to be disturbed. <laughs> Our mystery drama, Dead Man's Mountain, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Alan Hewitt. It is sponsored in part by the Kellogg Company, makers of Kellogg's Special K cereal. I'll return shortly with Act One. Hi, son. Hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. Hi, Junior. Kellogg's Special K presents Junior Gives Up. 
Junior, why aren't you eating your special K? It's your favorite cereal. Oh, just because. Just because why, honey? Just because Darla said some evil things about it. That's just because why. Hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. Hi, Hi Darla. Darla. Hi, Sis. Hi, Junior. Uh, Darla, what did you tell Junior about his special K? Daddy, all I told him was that special K is good for her. Yeah, and anything that's good for me never seems to taste good. But, Junior, you already know that special K tastes good. Who do I believe? Darla or my taste buds? Uh, what's that, son? Oh, nothing, Dad. Uh, son, special K is America's favorite high-protein cereal. It's got minerals, vitamins, iron, and all those good, nutritious things. But it got to be so popular over the years because it tastes good, too. You mean it's good for me and tastes good, too. Right, son. Right, Dad. Right, Junior. Right, 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 right indeed. Start your balanced breakfast with Kellogg's Special K. It's nutritious and delicious. Right, Dad. When occasional heartburn or acid indigestion is combined with a gassy, foolish feeling, that's what we call gassed indigestion. Digel is made for gassed indigestion because Digel is different. It does more than plain antacids. Digel reduces excess acid while its patented cymethicone gets rid of trapped gas fast. Use only as directed. Digel for gassed indigestion. No plain antacid can do what Digel can. Was I embarrassed? Even though I used an adhesive on my dentures, they still came loose during dinner. And when I had to be... This denture wearer should change to Cushion Grip, a soft, pliable, thermoplastic adhesive that even hot or cold liquids can't dissolve. That's why Cushion Grip lasts and holds dentures much longer than ordinary powder, paste, or cream adhesives you often must apply two or three times daily. For new long-lasting security, new comfort, change to Cushion Grip. R.J. Johnson sits at his desk. Yes, the R.J. Johnson. The mysterious, the remote R.J. Johnson. I'd better explain that. His ways are mysterious, except when his plans include you. He is remote, except when he wants something from you. Then his presence can become an overwhelming reality. Some say R.J. is the richest man in the world. Some say he's the second, the third, the fourth richest. Does it matter? All we need to know is that on this particular morning, R.J. Johnson sits at his desk, as usual, and is formulating plans to buy or sell what? An industry? A government? Somebody's soul? Parker, I want us to maintain our short position on consolidated industries. It's bleeding down steadily, and we should help depress it a bit, too. No, I'm not afraid of anything like that. They won't get a government contract. We can see to it. Uh, pick up National Computer and Starlight Oil. I want our full concentration on those three. I'll call you back later. Yes, Mrs. Dollard. Come in. Mr. Johnson... George Morrissey is here. And about time. I want hourly reports on Consolidated, National, and Starlight. The see to it that Parker can always reach me. Now, have Morrissey come in. But, sir, about Morrissey... Is there a problem? Well, I... I... You were saying... Perhaps I should have said... Mrs. Dollar, are you all right? Perhaps I should have said... There's a man outside who claims to be George Morrissey. Mrs. Dollar, do you know George Morrissey? I... I thought I did. If there's any doubt, check security. I did. Then that settles it. He could never hope to get past the lobby elevators if he weren't George Morrissey. Mr. Johnson, maybe what I'm trying to say is... There's a man out there. And I don't want him to be George Morrissey. Have him come in here. Yes, sir. Mr. Johnson will see you now. Do you see what I mean, Mr. Johnson? Mrs. Dollard, is this your idea of a practical joke? Who is this? Please, please, R.J., don't yell at her. I, I can't stand noise. I, uh... George? Yes, George. You can't be George. Look at me, R.J. Look at me. I can't believe it. Uh, you, you don't want to believe it. 
done to you? Please. Please let me... Let me sit down. He walked out of this office three weeks ago. Yes, yes, three weeks ago. He... He was a man of 35. And now... Now, I, I know. I know. I look in the mirror. I could be... Seventy-five. His hair is all white, wrinkled, stooped. And that's not the worst of it. I feel seventy-five. I couldn't even walk without this cane. George, the first thing you have to do is tell me exactly what happened. I... I was at Manitou Mountain getting the development deal set, and R.J., listen, we'll have to forget it. Give it up. What are you saying? I'm saying forget it. Look at what happened to me. They said, all the locals, they said... The mountain was haunted. Terrible things would happen to anyone who went up there. Talk sense. Can't you believe your eyes, R.J.? Look at what happened to me. George, start at the beginning. I... I couldn't get anyone to drive up the mountain road. So I hired a car. I drove it myself. I drove it up the mountain and... Uh... Yes, and? And that's all I remember, R.J., I must have passed out up there. But something did happen. It's... It's like a nightmare. I can't bring it into focus. Just flashes of it. Terrible things. Be specific. What kind of terrible things? Shapes. Forms. Voices. Saying I was going to die. That my life was falling away. That it was... It was disappearing. What kind of shapes? What sort of forms? I... I don't know. What size were they? What color? I, I don't you know. You say voices. What kind? High, low? Uh, Jay, I don't know. Were they men's know. voices? Women? I can't remember. I can't now pull remember. pull yourself together. Pull myself together. Look at me. I'm an old man. I've been robbed of half my life. Now think. How long did you stay on the mountain? I... I don't know. Somehow I managed to get the car turned around. I, I drove back to town. I found a doctor. What's his name? I... I don't know. What did he say? I can't remember. Arche, I came here to warn you. The mountain, it's haunted. It's cursed. Give up the project. Mrs. Dollard, call Dr. Watterson. No. No. Doctor can't help me anymore. But I can help you, Arche. Give it up. Give up the project. <laughs> Dr. Watterson? Ah, yes, yes. Keep him on fluids, and whatever you do, see that he remains absolutely calm. That was the resident. About George? No change in his condition. Have you checked the local doctor? The one who saw him first? Well, we called him. He reports he treated a man of about 70 for exhaustion. That's all you could get out of him? And that's all he had to say. And what have you got to say, Doctor? We find that George Morrissey has the physical signs of a man in his 70s. But you know very well he is not in his 70s. Chronologically, no. Medically, yes. Is there a disease that could age a man so radically in so short a time? Uh, I would say a man could be ravaged by some psychic or physical attack, but here we have no signs of trauma. His tissues, organs, nervous system, circulatory system, they show the deterioration that could only be caused by aging. Let's cut through all this, Doctor. How did it happen? We don't know. You don't know. Am I supposed to buy this nonsense about a haunted mountain, curses and all that? I don't have the answer, R.J. Watterson, over the years I have contributed millions for medical research. I bought this whole hospital for you. So, are you telling me that now, when I need some answers, I'm not going to get anything for my money? I'm telling you that we have no answers at this time. Hmm. Is it possible that George could be faking? Why should he want to fake? Answer my question. The answer is no. I want to see him. He's very weak. Is it important? I don't make unimportant requests. Well, just for a minute or two at most. And please... Don't excite him. I, I, I won the club. 
club championship, and I was named third team All America. George. <laughs> girls, you should see how the girls would fall all over. George, me. pay attention. Huh? Oh. Oh, it's, it's you, RJ. Listen. No, 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 George. Don't try to sit up, but I've got to talk to RJ. Listen, RJ. Are you listening? I'm listening. Here's what happens to you up there on the mountain. I remember, you see. Now, I remember. Yeah, R.J., don't excite him, I please. accept full responsibility. Up there on that mountain, I was told you will lose that which you value most. Told? You say told? How? By whom? I, I don't know. How can we get anywhere if you keep saying you don't know? R Think. Uh, R.J., I order you from this room. He's going to die soon, anyhow. We have to get that information. R.J., I will call security and have the guards throw you out of here. No, no, Doctor. No, leave us alone. This is between R.J. and me. What were you told, George? I, I wasn't really told. It was more like a, a kind of feeling, an idea that, that seemed to, to seep into me. And I realized the most important thing what mattered most to me was my body. Talk sense. I'm talking sense, R.J. And I began to lose my body. What do you mean, lose your body? The way you really lose it. To old age. Only, oh God, only I was losing it then and there. And all at once. Is that what you think happened, Marcy? But look. Look, I, I got away from there, you see. I got away just before I would have died. But why? I should have stayed. Look at me. What good am I now? Be calm and practical, George. We have the greatest doctors in the world here. We'll beat this thing. Uh, you can still beat it, R.J. You, you can still beat it. Just don't go near that mountain. Just give up the project. You wanted me, Mr. Johnson? As Parker called while I was out. Yes, sir. He reported in. Consolidated stock is still falling. That's good. National computer is rising. And Starlight Oil is doing well with the new government. Tell him to increase our holdings. Try 10%. Now, cancel the rest of today and all of tomorrow. Yes, sir. Call Chuck Daly. I want him here in three quarters of an hour. Uh, sir. What is it? Well, Chuck's about to leave for Florida. His daughter's getting married this afternoon. Tell him he is to fly me up to the Manitou Mountain area. But, Mr. Johnson... Now, what is it, Mrs. Dollar? You can't go up to Manitou Mountain. Why not? Well, you saw what happened. What did happen? You saw George Morrissey. About George Morrissey. Either he caught a disease... But medical science doesn't know of such a disease. Medical science is constantly being surprised. Obviously, someone does not want me to develop the Manitou Mountain Resort Complex. And perhaps they managed to buy George Morrissey. But I would bet my life on George Morrissey. You must never bet your life on anybody, Mrs. Dollard. The nearest town to Manitou Mountain is Lafayette Center. Reserve a room for me there at the motel. But he is George Morrissey. Fingerprints, dental records. Reserve it under the name R.J. Smith. Mr. Johnson... Are you going up there alone? You know perfectly well, Mrs. Dollar, that the way to get something done is to do it yourself. But isn't it dangerous for you to go? Mrs. Dollar, I have complete freedom of action because, as you know very well, practically nobody on the outside has the faintest idea of what I look like. How many days do you plan to spend with us, Mr. Uh, Smith? Well, that all depends. Oh? On what? Uh, do you suppose I could hire a car and driver? Oh, let's see. I have some cards here. Pick out any name. Tell them Doris Evans over at the motel recommended you. Do you mean I need a recommendation to hire a car? Well, it's deer season. Can't expect a man to concentrate on his business. I would think you can if you pay him and he recognizes his obligation. Oh, well, I can see you're a very serious-minded person, Mr. Smith. What brings you up to our uh, frivolous part of the world? I intend to do some sightseeing. Sightseeing? Well, I hear you have some very beautiful country. Oh, yes, we do have a lot of very beautiful country up here. Wild, unspoiled. And we aim to keep it that way, too. Uh, tell me, is there a doctor in town? Oh, I hope nothing's wrong. 
Wouldn't want you to get sick on us while you're here. No, I should just be checked every now and then. Oh, well, we do have Dr. Stallings. Does he have office hours now? <laughs> His office hours are when he's not hunting or fishing. But I think he'd give up a chance at a 12-point buck for you. Why? Well, he doesn't get an opportunity like this every day. To do what? To treat the world-famous R.J. Johnson. I see. Uh, how did you know oh, I... Oh, I'm sorry. Really, I, I shouldn't have given it away. After all, if you want to call yourself Mr. Smith, we should indulge that little conceit. But how did you know? Mr. Johnson, the whole town knows you're up here. Why, we've all been waiting for you. We've all been waiting. Waiting for what reason? Had they also been waiting for George Morrissey? And George was only R.J. Johnson's hired man. We'll be back shortly with Act Two. For children growing up in homes without books, there's a special emptiness. A deep-down hunger for the world beyond the street corner or playground. A world where they could grow up to become whatever they want to be. The millions of these children will never find out about that world. Because they'll never know what they can learn in books, unless you help. Riff, reading is fundamental, is helping to get millions of books into the hands of these boys and girls. Books they can choose themselves, for keeps. And once a child gets into books, there's no stopping him. More than 150 local Riff programs are proving it, in communities like yours. Won't you help Riff help the children in your community? Right to Riff Incorporated. That's RIF, care of Smithsonian Institution, Washington, D.C., 20560. Give your hand to a friend, give your heart to your love, but give your code. The two. Contact the sooner the better. Hey, I'm back. How's that cold? Rotten. Get the contact? Oh, I got everything. Contact, cold tablets, and the sleep. Oh, no. Honey, it's all cold medicine. Well, sure, but it only takes one contact for up to 12 hours continuous relief from sneezy, drips, congestion. For that, I'd need six of your cold tablets. Two every four hours. Or three ounces of nighttime liquid. One every four hours. Or just one contact. The tiny time pills do it. Well, it's all cold medicine. Those others contain antipyretic analgesics. The liquid, antitussive, and alcohol. They're not in contact. Six or three or one. I choose the one contact. Me too. And I'm the one with the cold. Give me cold. Contact the sooner the better. Six or three or one. When you catch a cold, take contact. Only as directed. One of the world's wealthiest men sits in the tiny lobby of a small motel in an out-of-the-way village somewhere in the Adirondacks. And suddenly he feels that all of his money and power somehow seem to be very far away at this anxious moment. You say the whole town's been waiting for me, Mrs. Evans? Yes, we've been waiting. Why? Well, you own us now. I own you? In a manner of speaking. You own all the land that surrounds this village. I would think of myself as more of a neighbor. Oh. Well, we don't think your plans for the area will make you a good neighbor. You had your chance to protest against the project at the hearing. And we did. And after the legislature weighed all the pros and cons, they acted in the interests of the entire state, not your narrow provincial prejudices. You really believe that, don't you? I certainly do. Well, we know why certain votes went a certain way. Oh, do you? Suppose you tell me. We know there was bribery and pressure. Really? None of this was found by the special prosecutor's office. Well, I must admit, though, I admire your courage. My courage? To come up here all alone without your thugs. Oh, just a minute, Mrs. Evans. Oh, they have clean fingernails, excellent manners, college degrees. But they help you to steal and cover your tracks. In that sense, they're no better than common thugs. You really believe that, don't you? Now, let me set you straight. I have never done anything illegal. Oh, you can't be serious. No court has ever found me guilty of any crime. 
congratulations. But here's what I am guilty of. Success. And this has earned me the envy and the hatred of millions of people. But that's human nature. I understand that. What I don't understand is the attitude of the people in this town. I'm not taking anything from them. I'm going to make every one of you rich. Can't you believe it? Oh, yes. We believe it. Do you have any idea how property values in this town will skyrocket when the development is here? Yes, indeed. Then why is everybody so unhappy? You know, you remind me of my husband. My late husband, that is. In what way? He was an unsuccessful version of you. He also worshipped money. But he didn't know how to make it. Now, what happened to your husband? He went up to what your investment brochure calls Manitou Mountain. Dead Man's Mountain, we call it around here, and it... Well, it killed him. How could the mountain kill it? It's an old Indian legend. Unless your conscience is completely clear, that mountain will kill you. Well, it killed poor Sidney Evans, rest his soul. Killed him? How? He was discovered at the foot of it. He was completely shriveled. There must be an explanation. Doc Stallings never found it. He just wrote it up as death due to causes unknown. Stallings is, after all, only a country doctor. That's right, he is. Tell me, how do your high-powered city doctors explain Mr. Morrissey? Who do you know about Mr. Morrissey? Oh, the whole town knows about Mr. Morrissey. Poor Mr. Morrissey, he went up there... Something he had no business doing. I must correct that. He had every business doing it. He was my agent inspecting my property on orders from me. But the fact is, he went up there, and the mountain got him. Have other people met with mysterious results after climbing that mountain? Oh, very few and far between. We may be just country folk up here, but we learn from experience. <laughs> Are you Dr. Stallings? Well, look who's here. They said you'd be out fishing. <laughs> well, that's never a bad guess, but it takes two, and the trout won't play. I'd like to talk to you. Sure. I'm willing to pay you for a consultation. Oh, I intend to charge you. Well? Well, what? Well, aren't you going to come up here out of the water? Well, you see, I got my eye out for a certain brown trout. So you just tell me your symptoms... I'll decide whether I have to examine you. An employee of mine. You treated him recently. George Morrissey. Oh, him. What happened to George Morrissey? Well, I met him at the motel. It was a Thursday night. I go there for dinner whenever Doris Evans serves pot roast. Hey, you're lucky. She's having it tonight. About Mr. Morrissey. Oh, he was a serious kind of fellow. About like you... Same, no nonsense, let's get right down to it attitude. I'm only interested in what happened to Morrissey. What uh, happened? Well, he wanted to hire somebody to drive him up to Dead Man's Mountain. And nobody would do it. That's right. Why? Well, you've been told why by now, I'm sure. I'm asking you why. I'll tell you the same thing. That's impossible. Why is it impossible? Oh, I see what you're thinking. It's all right for the simple-minded hicks up here to swallow that superstitious nonsense. But me, I'm a doctor. A product of a highly sophisticated, specialized education. That's exactly what I'm thinking. Well, think again. Because I believe it, too. There has to be a reasonable, logical, rational explanation for what happened to George Morrissey. Oh, there is, there is. He offended the spirit of the mountain. Oh, you consider that reasonable, logical, rational? Would you feel better if I said there's something up in that mountain, a virus, a bacillus, a fungus, which somehow causes immediate aging? It would be a more rational explanation. <laughs> you mean more acceptable. I want to know what you believe, and I'll pay you for it. I believe the evidence. If you go up there, you can die. But Why? Because a great spirit lives up there and he values his privacy. That's impossible. I saw George Morrissey at dinner one night. A vigorous, athletic-looking man in his 30s. I saw him again the following evening. A broken old man, half dead. And you explain it with this half-baked legend. Uh, 
Well, how do your city doctors, with all their modern facilities, explain it? Your Dr. Waterson, a world-famous diagnostician, he called me. He asked me. This thing has to be cleared up. Why? What's wrong with a nice, quiet mystery? If word of this becomes general, it can destroy the entire project. Uh Aha. Is that bad? Millions of people will be deprived of an opportunity to enjoy healthful recreation in a fresh country environment. Ah, but it won't be fresh country, you see. You'll have super highways and smoke and noise and honky-tonk resorts. I'm convinced that you people are up to something. Well, you tell me what. I don't know. But I assure you, I have the resources to find out. Well, if you ever do, let me know. Well, did you find Doc Stallings? My secretary should have called me on the hour. Oh, she did. We served dinner till 9.30, but the best time to eat's around 6. From then on, it's leftovers. I'll have a sandwich sent up to my room. Oh, you're joking. I don't tell jokes. You mean all you want for dinner is a sandwich? Mrs. Evans, food is merely fuel. The body is just a machine, and so my tastes are very simple. Whom do rich men think they impress when they say they have simple tastes? Do you have a wife? I never married. Oh? Well, so far we've eliminated wine and women. I can see by looking at you that uh, there isn't too much song. What do you do with all your money? I make it grow. Whatever you do, don't go up that mountain. I don't think I need any more advice from anyone around here. I would like to place a call to New York. You go up, up that mountain, and when you come down... You'll be penniless. You have my secretary's number there. Please put it through. Just remember, I told you. It's exactly five minutes past four, Mrs. Dollard. I know that, sir. Why haven't you heard from Parker? I'm expecting a call any moment. Any moment was not his orders. I specifically directed him to report on the hour. Yes, sir. Why is there a delay? I don't know. We'll find out. Mr. Johnson, I'm only human. What did you say, Mrs. Dollard? Mrs. Dollard? Operator? Operator! Now, see here, Mrs. Evans. Oh, Mr. Johnson, I was just trying to reach your room. I've been cut off in the middle of a crucial telephone call. Carlotta, the phone company operator, she just told me that we can't get through to New York for a bit. What are you saying? Well, you've seen those signs along the roads. Look out for falling rocks. Well, we just had a pretty good slide on Route 640. But I must talk to New York. A lot of wires are down, but Ev Bailey and his boys will have it fixed before long. Oh, hi, Doc. Hello, Doris. And why does the celebrated R.J. Johnson look so agitated? Well, he can't make a phone call. Oh, my, my, my. You know, Mr. Johnson, as a physician, I have a prescription that could keep you healthy and happy for years. Doctor, I'm in no mood for your folksy philosophy. I have to make a phone call. Don't you want to hear my prescription? How long will it take to repair the line? So, maybe an hour. An hour? Maybe less. I would prescribe the following. Chuck it all, Mr. Johnson. Give it up. Settle down here and marry Doris. <laughs> I'm not sure I'd want to marry him, Doctor. I'm not out to marry anybody. Oh, why not? What's going on in this town? Are you people crazy? Where's the police station? The the police station? Well, we uh, we do have a sheriff. Send for him. What do you want the sheriff for? There has to be some kind of plot. Uh, where can I find the sheriff? Oh, you don't have to find him. He's, he's coming in the door right now. Hi, Elwood. Evening, folks. Ah, a gentleman here wants to see you, Elwood. Yes, sir. Sheriff, I need your help. That's what we're here for, sir. My name is R.J. Johnson. Pleased to meet you. Sheriff, these people are trying to... Uh, these people are trying to... Uh, yes, sir. These people are out to do me harm. Which people? Among others, these two. Yeah, but Doc Stallings here is the greatest guy you'd ever hope to meet. Matter of fact, he takes care of me. And I personally vouch for Doris. She's my sister. A very nice, tidy little town. And the natives are so friendly and obliging. And so concerned with your well-being. 
But right now, R.J. Johnson feels overwhelmed by their solicitude. As if he is being literally killed with kindness. We'll return shortly with Act Three. Ever see a beer drinker pour his beer real easy down the side of the glass? Maybe you do it yourself. If so, the Budweiser Brewmaster thinks you're missing something. Especially if you're a Budweiser drinker. You see, Bud is brewed, so it will kick up a healthy head of foam. Exclusive beechwood aging and natural carbonation make it a lively brew. Well, anyway, pouring Bud plunk down the middle of the glass helps bring out the best in that clean white Budweiser foam and real beer aroma. It also helps you get the full benefit of a taste, smoothness, and drinkability you'll find in no other beer at any price. Remember, brewing beer right does make a difference. Next time, pour that Budweiser right down the middle and see for yourself. Anheuser-Busch, St. Louis. I'm Art Linkletter, and I'd like to talk about something that everybody loves. Babies. Play School has introduced a group of fascinating baby toys. Play School, a Milton Bradley company, has been making toys for generations of preschool children. And their baby toys are just terrific. They're fun and safe. Babies will love the baby action ball. They can grasp it, roll it, shake it, or throw it. The baby mirror of unbreakable stainless steel introduces them to the most important person in the world when they look into the mirror, themselves. The play school toddler truck is great for baby to scoot around in, and it even has a miniature telephone for baby's first phone calls. My children are grown up now, but if they were babies, I know what I'd want them to have, the play school baby toys. Your children are going to love making discoveries every day with play school's new baby toys. And every day is a good day to make a baby happy. Are the people of Lafayette Center the kindly, generous-hearted folks they seem to be? Or is this a place of evil where death waits for strangers? especially a wealthy stranger like R.J. Johnson. How are these good people out to harm you, Mr. Johnson? I don't know, Sheriff, but something is going on. And I demand protection until I can get some of my own people up here. Hey, you've got to appreciate my position, Mr. Johnson. There's nothing I can do unless you make a charge. Well, we're only trying to help him, Elwood. You see, I look at this man's face and I hear the tension in his voice and I see his, uh, his color, you know? So I say to him, change your way of life. Settle down up here. Is that harming him? Well, it doesn't seem like it. I recommend a more regular routine. And we both keep warning him, stay away from Dead Man's Mountain. Mr. Johnson? Here about, for reasons best known to yourselves, you people are determined to keep strangers at a distance. Oh, we'd only be too happy if more folks would move up here. And so you invented this nonsense about a cursed and haunted mountain. But why? You know why, Sheriff. Because to any man of intelligence and courage, it presents a challenge. But before a man goes up there, you prepare him. Well, gentlemen, you can stay and listen to all this. I've got to serve dinner. By all means, Mrs. Evans. We can continue this discussion at the table. Oh? I thought all you wanted was a sandwich. Oh, no. Tonight, I'm having all the trimming. <laughs> Here you are, Mr. Johnson. Thank you. Hot roast, mashed potatoes, peas and carrots. Now, that's a cure for whatever ails you. Uh, hold on. Dr. Stallings, change plates with me, please. Why? It's the same portion. Except I always give you a little bit less, uh, Would you mind changing plates, Doctor? No, not if you tell me why. Since I'm going up to the mountain, there could be something in this food. A drug, perhaps. Oh, I like that. <laughs> Very well, Mr. Johnson. Here, have it your way. Uh, you say you're going up the mountain? Yes. After all we told you? I'm going up that mountain to prove that it's just an ordinary piece of undeveloped country real estate. Can you stop him? Why well, would everybody want to stop me? 
Well, look what it did to your Mr. Morris. Suppose, for the sake of argument, there is something dangerous up there. And it gets me. Isn't that to your interest? Without me, there can't be a development project. Well, we have a more basic interest. We have obligations as human beings. Well, now, I will need a car. There's a road, I assume. Oh, yes, sir. Leads up to the top. But why go now? At night? Because the word should get around. R.J. Johnson drove up this... this dead man's mountain, as you call it, in the dead of night... And just as calmly drove down again. But, Mr. Johnson, You really... have something to learn, Mrs. Evans. You think a man becomes rich through trickery, violence, and all manner of illegal, immoral, and unethical acts. I never said that. But you believe it. Tonight, you're going to discover how I became rich. By daring to do what other people consider impossible. It's that simple. I uh, would still advise you to keep away from that mountain. Let's end the little game, Doctor. I have humored all you people long enough. Well, very well. How do you account for George Morrissey? Very simple. George Morrissey is not R.J. Johnson. Oh. Does the spirit of the mountain, going along with the legend, kill everyone whose conscience is not clear? Very well. I'm safe. My conscience is unblemished. Elwood, I still think you should stop him. The sheriff has no right to interfere. I'm merely inspecting my own property. Well, he's right, Doris. A little exercise in morality here. Who would care to accompany me? You look down on me. You are the pillars of virtue. You mean there isn't a clear conscience among the three of you? I'll drive you. Doris. Doris, what are you saying? He's challenged us. But, Doris, you know you can't fight the mountain. Well, we can't let somebody else get killed up there either. Well, what can you do? Well, at the first sign of anything suspicious, I can turn the car around. Mr. Johnson, you've got yourself a driver. And I suggest we leave right now. The moon goes down early around here. Oh, uh, first I have to call New York. But the lines are still down. How do you know? Carlotta will let us know when they're fixed. Maybe I'd better wait. Oh, don't tell me you're starting to have uh, second thoughts. I have some very important things to check out. Well, we can drive to the top of the mountain and back again in an hour. How do you know? Have you done it before? No. Just a guess. And I'm ready if you are. Well? What is it, Mrs. Evans? Well, we're here. We're at the foot of Dead Man's Mountain. And there, you see, on your right, mm? is the dirt road that leads upward. How far? Oh, I don't know. Well, what are we waiting for? You won't change your mind, Mr. Johnson? No. I still don't understand why you have to do this. This is another reason why I'm a rich man. I buy stock nobody else believes in. I finance schemes other people think are harebrained. I back men no one else will work with. And I climb mountains everyone else is scared by. I'm climbing this mountain, too. Then you also deserve to be rich. Well, do we go ahead, or do we turn back? One must always go ahead, Mrs. Evans. Then, here goes. How do you feel, Mrs. Evans? All right. I guess. You guess? How do you feel? I don't have to guess. I know. I feel great. It should be interesting. What? Let's assume all you people are right. This mountain is haunted by a great spirit who strikes down all who have guilt. Which one of us do you suppose he'll strike down? Well, I don't have a guilty conscience. I wonder about that. I heard the doctor say you had a weakness for men with problems. Your late husband. Maybe he didn't have problems. Maybe you had the problems. Well, we all have problems. Stop for a moment. What's the matter? I think I... I heard somebody. I haven't heard a sound. Uh, listen. R.J., I'll have the security guards throw you out of here. It's Watterson. Dr. Watterson. What's he doing up here? Who's Dr. Watterson? He's looking after George Morrissey. 
I'll throw you out of here. Did you hear him? There's no one around but you and me. Now that I think of it, that's a strange way for Watterson to talk to me. He would never have the guts to say that unless... unless he knew something. Look, I think we'd better no, turn no, no, around. No, 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 I think I'm learning something. Watterson... Do you know that Watterson is Parker's son-in-law? Who's Parker? My administrative assistant. He executes all my orders. Suppose Consolidated Industries is not going down. Suppose it's starting to go up. Suppose Parker is still holding... Oh, come on, Mr. Johnson. Just just relax. Now, if it's too much for you up here, let's turn back... Tell me, Mrs. Evans, how did you know I'd be here? We, We just assumed... No one told you. Who would tell us? A pilot. My pilot. I didn't even know you had one. He may have been put out because I made him fly me here on his daughter's wedding day. Oh, well, that really wasn't nice. I pay him enough, but he didn't tell you. No. Listen. I don't hear Shut anything. Just listen. There. I'm only human, Mr. Johnson. I'm only human. Why would she answer me like that if she didn't know something? I don't hear a thing, Mr. Johnson. I'm only human. I'm only human. Let me tell you about her. She's quiet. She's almost mousy. But she's ambitious. I can tell. I've made her a rich woman. She's in on it. She's in on it, too. She and Parker and Morrissey. They worked it out. And you're in on it, too. Me? They wanted me out of the way. And so all of you got together. You worked up this phony scheme. Look, we're going to turn back. Answer the phone. What phone? Answer it. Hello. Hello. Mr. Johnson, I have the latest quote on Consolidated. It's going up. It can't go up. It's gone up five points. So far. Get Parker. Close it out. Close it out. I can't find Parker. Get him. Get him. Mrs. Dollard. Mrs. Dollard. Who are you talking to? My secretary. She hung up on me. How could she hang up? There's no phone. Consolidated is going up. But there's no stock market at night. Mr. Johnson. It's going crazy. National computer is going down. Have Parker sell at once. I can't find Parker. Mrs. Dollard. Mrs. Dollard. She's gone again. Listen to me, Mr. Johnson. Please listen. Do you know how much money I've lost so far? Please, listen. You you have nothing to be afraid of. It's just a legend. Who can be sure it's true? Oh, sure, we we local people push it to scare away developers. I feel weak. As if I lost a lot of blood. Listen, you're R.J. Johnson. You're not to be taken in with this superstitious nonsense. Fight it off! I, I, I can't. I'm trying. But all my strength is going. My money is disappearing. Your money isn't your strength. It is, it is. I, I have nothing else. Please... Answer the phone for me. I can can hardly lift the receiver. The rebel government just nationalized Starlight Oil. What what, what did you say? Mrs. Dollard. Mrs. Dollard. Mr. Johnson. We're leaving. What? It, It happened. Everything... Everything I was afraid of happened. Consolidated went up. National went down. And Starlight... Nothing happened. It's all your imagination. Mr. Johnson. Mr. Johnson. Talk to me. Mr. Johnson. <laughs> Doris, I don't know. There isn't a mark or a sign on him. It's as if all the force and vital energy just left his body. Well, maybe it's all for the best. He was in trouble. Trouble? 
It was on the news. Some of his holdings went haywire for some reason. Three big companies. He's out millions. He may have died just in time. <laughs> the mountain. The mountain. What what about the mountain? It's true. Every word we say about it. It's true. Oh, come on, sis. How can it be true? The mountain killed him. He took away his money. Doris, are you all right? I... I don't know. I don't know yet. I... I wonder... What did it do to me? Well, what did it do to Doris? Everybody loses what he values most up on Dead Man's Mountain, as the saying goes. Maybe Doris had fallen in love with R.J., and thus the mountain robbed her, too. I'll be back shortly. Who knows how to help you solve your shopping problems? Your Better Business Bureau knows. For heaven's sake, this store won't give me back my $25 for the ice skates. All they would give me is this credit slip, and they don't even have any more skates in my size. Oh, what am I going to do? Madam, not all stores make cash refunds on returns, you know. Who are you? I'm the man from the Better Business Bureau. You know, only some stores will make refunds because it's their policy to do so, not because they're required to do so. Next time, remember, find out about a store's policy on refunds and exchanges before you buy. I guess you're right. Well, you know, it's just another tip from your better business bureau. Haunted Mountains. Did this one cause certain stocks to go up and down one day recently? It certainly seems no more far-fetched than some of the explanations people have for the market. The cast in our exercise in The Extraordinary included Alan Hewitt, Bryna Rayburn, William Redfield, and Robert Dryden. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Now, a preview of our next tale. The only way to learn how to swim is to jump in the water, right? I simply can't make you understand, can well, I? Well, maybe I can make you understand. Ah, forget it. You want to get that dinner ready? I'm hungry. Yes, yes, I'm going now. Uh, look, uh, why don't you change first? Change? Yeah, yeah, your clothes. Get more comfortable. Yes, I think I'd like to do that, George. I, I won't be long. Take it easy. That's my surprise. That's a teller. Get him out of here. Please, George, take him away. It's only a dog for Pete's <laughs> sake. He's not going to hurt you. Get it out, George. Please. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time... Pleasant dreams. KRLD's Mystery Theater presents seven thrilling dramas each week. 